All right, welcome to another episode of one of the most electric baseball podcasts out there. I am your host, Francisco Castro. This podcast is part of More Than Baseball. Uh, More Than Baseball is working daily to better the lives of minor leaguers all over baseball. Our mission is to protect and enhance the future of the game by allowing every ball player to live a better life during and after their careers. Uh, check them out at morethanbaseball.org or morethanbaseball.com. Actually, no, it is org. Whatever. It's been, I haven't finished my coffee. <laughs> Check them out at morethanbaseball.org. Also check out advocates for minorleaguers.com. They're doing their part to help out minor leaguers as well. All right, super excited for my guest today. He was drafted out of Arkansas State uh, University in the sixth round. A pitcher throwing absolute gas for the Kansas City Royals. Tyler Zuber, how's it going, brother? Man, it's going good. You know, living the dream out here in Arizona, rehabbing, trying to uh, trying to get ready to get back out there. Yeah, no, for sure. And how how is the rehab going? I mean, obviously, it's it's a long process. Like how have you like kept yourself entertained and like sane throughout, throughout the whole process? Um, my wife's normally out here, but she, mm-hmm. she um, her mom was in a horse show, uh, for this weekend. So she, she'll be back probably in about a week or so. Um, but normally, you know, we, we've kind of gotten into a routine of we'll eat dinner or whatnot. Um, and normally it's been, you know, 110, 115 degrees. So we don't, we normally like to say until the sun goes down yeah. and there's a local community pond down the street that's got a bunch of ducks around. So we'll go and get our steps in and uh, we'll bring them some Cheerios and my wife's named them all. So we'll go down there and we'll, we'll do a head count. And then every Wednesday there's a, there's a dog place that's down the, sh- that's in Glendale. That they always get like a new shipment of puppies and so we go down there, play with them for about an hour, two hours, and then just normally head on home. But yeah, that's normally that it. Uh, go to the pool in our backyard from our rent from our rent house, um, and then just rehab. That's really about it. Yeah. So you would say you're a big animal person, then? I mean, visiting ducks, visiting dogs. I mean, yeah, like the uh, animal guy. I like animals. I definitely want a dog or two. For- whenever and get a house and whatnot um my wife wants a farm so that's that's gonna be uh, a project needless to say so but no i mean i like animals i like to hunt animals um so it's it's all right yeah what kind of hunting do you do like like bow gun i mean i I don't know anything about hunting so i'm acting like i know what i'm talking about i have no idea (laughs) uh i want so I normally just gun hunt, but I really want to get um, get into bow hunting more. I just have to obviously I have to get a bow again. Um, but I hunt dove, uh, duck, deer, turkeys, and I really want to go elk. Like I want to go hiking in the mountains and spot them from you know there's one six hundred yards away, and you got to predict where he's gonna go you gotta wow. like use the wind and you gotta use the terrain to your advantage uh, that's that's the kind of stuff and then after you shoot them and kill them then you gotta quarter them up get on your horse go back to the truck that's three or four miles away five miles away and then go on about your business wow that's awesome and so you say you duck hunt but you love watching the ducks at the duck pond do you feel ever guilty yeah. just kind of walking around there like your 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 it's, cousin it's that's it's coming. different completely different uh kind of ducks uh the ducks that i hunt are they won't let you get anywhere close to them these ducks over here have been around people for three four five probably five six seven years so they they're used to it um if one of them happens to fly by me in arkansas i can't say that that one might be alive yeah uh, but they're here. They're they're more like pet ducks out here. The ones I hunt are not pet ducks. They they're they're just trying to fly by. Yeah, and you mentioned that it was like 110 ish degrees out there in, in Arizona. Like I, that's insane because right here is 80 ish. You know, I guess 85. It gets pretty hot somewhat in Wisconsin. Uh, nothing compared to like Arizona. Like, how do you even deal with that? Because I'd be out day one. Uh. It's a lot of like dry heat, but I don't know. For some reason, this year it's been a little humid. Um, 
the way you deal with it is you just deal with it pretty much. You just drink a lot of water mm -hmm. and just suck suck it up. Embrace yeah. the sun pretty yeah, much. So, so you talked about Arkansas um, growing up. Like, is Arkansas, is that pretty country out there? Like, would you classify uh, yourself as a country guy? Yeah, I mean, I drive a truck, I hunt, I wear boots. Um, I don't, I don't religiously listen to country music um but i will listen to it um mm -hmm. my wife loves country music so obviously i have to listen to country music which is right. fine like I, I went to a morgan wallen concert this mm -hmm. past off season is my first concert i've ever been to in my entire life um i would go to a thousand more morgan wallen concerts i thought that was him hardy and uh some other there was another guy there's three, it was three of them that performed, but I would go to, I would go see those three perform a thousand more times. It, I thought it was really cool. Um, is entertaining. Um, I mean, but when I was growing up, I liked to drive four wheelers in the mud and do all country guy stuff and go hang out in the woods. And, uh, so yeah, I mean, I guess you could say that I'm a city country boy. I was going to ask you, like, how country are you? Because I grew up in the city. I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area. So, like, completely city. Like, nothing country about, <laughs> nothing country about it. Uh, the, no only city I, and all that. the only city I'd say about me is probably the fact that I play baseball. And the places that I play, I have to live in the city. Mm -hmm. um, so, it's like, I guess you could somewhat say that. But I, if ideally, I would live 30 minutes away with about 600 acres around me with ponds uh, that I can fish in um, and a lot of, and have let my wife have all of her animals and I would just have like a big so-called farm. Yeah. That would be the ideal place. So we actually got our, my son, a duck. He's, he was four at the time. So his, uh, we not at our house. We kept it at our, that's the move. We kept it at our, my brother-in-law's house. So he had like a little, the area in the back where you know they can keep ducks and stuff so we got bought the duck bought his kids a duck and then we kept them all three of the ducks out there in his place so that way we can go see the duck but that's where it ends we don't have to worry about <laughs> we just enjoy so, the enjoy the duck and not have to worry about cleaning, well, we, cleaning and all well, that we ended, well we ended up rescuing a duck probably i'd probably say five four or five months ago we were at the we were at a hotel here in Arizona and we had to re we rescued one that was on its deathbed and we're like well we're just gonna let it we'll, we'll at least take it back and let it die in like in peace and not like bobbing its head in and out of the water and just gasping for air mm -hmm. it's like, Fine, we'll let it die in peace about three hours later it's up chirping up a storm swimming I'm um, we're thinking well a couple weeks we'll just keep it for a couple weeks and then we'll get rid of it well, a couple weeks turned into about three or four weeks. And then my wife left to go home for a week and it left me with the duck for a week. Um, and as soon as she got back, she, uh, she was only back for a day before that duck was, we gave them to some, to a farm angel sanctuary out here in Arizona. Wow. That duck, it just craps everywhere and it's just messy. Uh, ugh. See, that's what I'm saying. That's that's why I was smart about it. I, I left it, you know, about about ten minutes away where we can go visit, but not have to worry about about the mess and all but that. Those get dirty. It, it's just they crap everywhere. Like yeah. I don't understand how in the world they like they don't eat anything for however long, and they got to use the bathroom fourteen times. I'm thinking, how? Yeah. And it's just oh my gosh, it's, it's insane. True ridiculous so how hard was it then giving up that duck because obviously like i said you guys are for me or for no, her well, i'm sure it was easy for you <laughs> for me it was like you're the one who's the which person here is in charge who needs this duck yeah Eat hand over but my wife was it was hard for her she i don't know why i don't and she said and she even said too she said i don't know why this is so hard and i'm like i'm gonna be honest just give me the duck and i'll gladly hand it over like it's yeah. pretty simple here we ain't gotta we ain't gotta make this into a whole deal here yeah but now she she the lady's good so like she even sent us a couple updated pictures and whatnot so oh, we man. thought the duck was gonna be a boy <laughs> it wasn't it was a girl so 
we found out that we had a girl hen, a hen the whole time. So I know oh, that's pretty cool that we found that out. Yeah. That's awesome. I mean, like I said, that's we, we did it smart way. I mean, that's probably what we'll do again <laughs> moving forward unless we end up buying a country house, which I don't ever foresee us doing. But hey, I want to ask you about this. Um, Last when I was about to have you on a couple, maybe a month or two ago, I reached out to Nick Heath. That's my guy. I said, hey, uh, I'm going to have uh, Tyler on. Give me like a, a good story, something to get something I can like work with. Right. And he says he doesn't have any funny stories. And I think I messaged you about this, too. But he said that you guys had a little rivalry going and that he would. Um, you would get him with a fastball and then you would tell him that a changeup is coming or no, you would tell him a fastball is coming, then just throw him a changeup instead. And said, he, he said, you get him a couple of times, but he wanted me to remind you about a high fastball. I got torched to left center. So I wanted to sh- just get that out of the way. On squirrel finds an acorn every now and then. I just want that to be known yeah. that a squirrel from time to time finds an acorn. But Nick Heath did, did, in quote, he said, we were in the batting cage in Kansas City in 2020, and he decided that he was going to say that he hit this ball fair. Now, you're in a batting cage, and obviously in a batting cage, the netting and whatnot can kind of, like, uh, I don't know, astray like your eyes or whatever. So it was like, it was 3-2, and I threw, I threw a changeup. And he hit it in the direction that he hit it was the direction that the ball was going to be foul. Like Mm -hmm. you could just tell a lefty hits it to left field. The ball is going to slice more towards the line. More than likely, it wasn't even hard hit. So it was like, it's probably going to be a foul ball. But Nick was like, oh, no, that's fair ball. That's a double. That's a double. That's a double. I'm like, there was five people over there that all said the exact same thing except for him. And finally, he was like, okay, fine. Like, we'll go one more pitch, one more pitch. I said, okay, because that's all I had. I had one more. And he said, I bet you won't throw that again. I said, okay. So, of course, me as a pitcher, like, I don't want him to know that I'm going to throw it again. So, I'm going to try to play a mind game with him because I'm thinking to myself, he's probably thinking he ain't going to throw it again. He's going to throw a fastball or something. So, now here we go with this little mind game back and forth. Well, change up is called. Throw it. And I remember him taking the knee on a strikeout in the, in the right field batting cage. Now, the following spring training, I tried to muscle up on a fastball, and, of course, a blind squirrel finds an acorn, and he hits it hard. But that's the only that's the only ball that he's even gotten close to making contact with. Yeah, that's funny. And I, and I, want, that to go, and I want that to go on the record and be sent to him. That oh, he I'm going to I'm going to message him. Yeah, like I'm going to I'll reach out to him, let him know that, you know, what you said and all that. That's my guy though. He's funny. He's a he's a character. Like I watched him like he was on like live at bats, like both momentum sports and all that kind of stuff. Like he's uh-huh. a he's just a fun guy and fun guy to talk to. Yeah, he's interesting, all right. He's in uh where's he at now? West Virginia, right? Uh he's with I think the American League. Um also with um yeah, I think uh, another guy from the Royals, I think, is on that team as well. Um, man, I can't think of his name. Adams, Anderson, Miller, Andrew Miller, Anderson Miller. Mil- I thought he was in Lexington. I thought Anderson Miller was in Lexington. I, I know. Wrong. Maybe they're in, maybe they're in the same league, just different teams. Maybe that's what it is. That's right. Yeah, something like that. But yeah, so I I, I had I've had both of them on the pod, like both good guys. Um, I was really hoping uh, Nick could you know, make it work in, uh, with Arizona and all that, but you never know. Maybe there's, you know, there's still a chance, a chance time for him to, mm-hmm. uh, get there's 20, still. say that again. There's 29 other teams out there. So. Oh no, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So, uh, let's talk about you kind of growing up and stuff. When did you realize you were kind of nasty at pitching? Cause obviously I'm looking at your stats and your I'm not a stat guy, but your junior year, you had a one eight seven ERA and then a three, three, three batting average, just, you know, the, uh, that in there. I kind of realized I don't know it, it was it was kind of a crazy my first game I ever pitched I'll never forget it it was a uh I was nine and so there was like yeah a game and the b game in little league and I was throwing in the b game and I, he had me starting I went three innings and I struck out eight nice and had no idea what the heck I was doing. I was pitching mm-hmm. in three innings, punched out eight, and I thought, holy smokes. 
like I kind of like this. Like it's fun. My next one wasn't so pretty, but so I started taking lessons. And then when I got to about 12, I realized I was throwing like hard for like my league and whatnot. Cause like no one was really touching the ball. And I was like, man, like maybe I got a knack for this 13 years old, same thing, 14 years old, same thing, 15 year old. I kind of made like a little jump and I was like, man, like nobody here is like even getting like close to touching this ball. And I'm like, well, maybe I got a future in this. And so my, so then I kind of hit like that, a weird learning my body growing phase. And all of a sudden, like, it was like, oh my gosh, I don't even know if baseball's really even like for me anymore. Like sucked. My ninth grade year, I was horrible. Like it was okay. My 10th grade year was by far the worst, like mental year, like for me, like at that age. Cause I was like, I'd been successful my whole life. And all of a sudden now I'm like struggling and I'm like, God, like, I don't know if, I don't know if I can do this. I remember almost like I wanted to quit several times. I thought I can't do this. Like, this is just tough. Like I'm not throwing strikes. I'm just pitching all over the place. Like, I'm getting pulled against like um, – If are you familiar like the class of high school classifications, like 1A, 2A, 3A? So we were 5A and we were facing like 1A schools. Mm-hmm. And we, I was pitching against like their ninth grade teams and I was like getting pulled because I couldn't make it out of like the first or second inning. I thought, <laughs> wow, this is bad. All of a sudden, I got in the weight room and I come back the next year and like the coach is like, yeah okay like you made the team but like okay and I remember I threw in the first uh JV no it was it was like there's like varsity A and varsity B game and I threw in the first varsity B game I went through three innings and I punched out all nine (laughs) I remember afterwards the coach said all right Zuber's gonna start game one of this tournament this weekend for my junior year and I was like okay like I finally feel confident on the mound yeah well I threw in the first game And I went all seven and I punched out 12 and I gave up one hit, like two walks. And I thought, I'm finally like, this is finally fun. Like, I thought this is it. Junior year went on. Great. Senior year rolls back. Senior year rolls around and uh, start off the exact same way. Throwing a lot of pitches, like four innings. A lot of it, too, was I was throwing really hard for like high school and everybody's game plan was take. Like we we we're gonna try to let Zuber walk us or get to full counts or foul balls or something like that, and we're gonna try to get him out of the game like the fourth or fifth inning. Yeah. So that way we can uh, we can try to win. So that was like their game plan, but eventually, is probably a quarter of the way into the season, I finally started like something clicked again. And well, I started throwing seven innings and not walking anybody and punching out, you know, 12, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 people because they just strike one, strike two, strike three. Okay, mm-hmm. well, then maybe he walked the next guy. I don't know. Strike one, strike two, strike three. It's like, yep, I've got it figured out now. When did you commit to uh, Arkansas State? Like, what, what year? Um, it was after my junior summer, before the start of my senior year. So, so two thousand. Like, well, I mean, like you're after your your where were you in high school? So after your junior year, you yeah, committed. Okay. Um, what other schools did you visit? And like, were there any other teams or other, any other schools that were maybe interested in you? Um, yeah, like, like, what like kind every of stood out about Arkansas State. Like every kid that goes that grows up in the state of Arkansas, we don't have a professional team in state, so every kid wants to be a Razorback. Mm-hmm. Um. So that's obviously that was like my dream was like I want to be a Razorback, I want to be a Razorback, and they offered me like a walk on spot. But after realizing that they had like you know what sixty something guys every fall, I'm like I don't really want to compete against that. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a little bit of interest from old from Ole Miss. Um, I had some like bigger schools like East, like I had. It was kind of crazy. I had like UConn, Virginia Tech reaching out like. I had some of them like, hey, we need your summer schedules, um, but nothing more than that. And then, like, pretty much everyone in the state of Arkansas, I visited Division One wise And then a couple, like, out of state, like Louisiana Monroe, 
um, Southeast Missouri, uh, Southeast Missouri State. Um, so like there was like a few little ones like that. But then when I went to I went to UCA Central Arkansas and they I wasn't really impressed with the campus um, and they didn't kind of wow me over with any of the facilities. And so then I went to Arkansas State. Um, it wasn't like the it wasn't like a drastic up from the facilities. It was just like how I felt when I was there. Like I felt like I was the president of the United States. Like they mm-hmm. were like showing me everything. If I had a question, if they didn't know it, they were stopping and asking somebody. They were like, Hey, answer this question for him. Like it was like I was the most important person in the entire world to them. And I thought, you know what? Like they made they took it their time out of their weekend mm-hmm. to make me feel like the most important person. Um and so then I you kind of went home and thought about it. And I was like, you know what? that's kind of where I want to go. And ultimately that's what, that's what led to my decision. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the university of Arkansas, do they, they only offered you a walk on. They didn't offer you like, sure. Now they're probably, you know, kicking themselves for letting you get away. You know, you're that one guy, the the guy who got away from them, you know, they're in Arkansas, you know, well, you know like in a way, in a way, like a little bit of me back then, I was like, you know what? Like, man, forget them, man. Like they, like they, they screwed me over. They didn't offer me a scholarship when they should have, like I'll show them. But now whenever I look at them, like, you know what, like, let's just rewind the tape and let's go back. And let's say I do go to Arkansas. Do I make it to the big leagues? Do I get drafted? Point. Like, do I, do I do anything that I've done in my baseball career mm-hmm. up to this point versus Arkansas state? I pitch as a freshman I become a the closer as a freshman. Mm-hmm. I start as a sophomore. I sucked as a junior. And then as a senior, like I dominated again, like and and I didn't have any college debt. So it was like if I went to Arkansas, I'm on no money. Parents are out X amount of thousands of dollars, student loan debt. Now I've got now after I'm done playing, now I have to pay off debt. And it's like no, you're right. It was it was a good decision. It's a good decision by you. Right. Obviously, you get your playing time. How was it playing there in Arkansas State? Like, how was uh, how was like the vibes there? Like, I mean, obviously, you got college game day. Um, like, how was that too? Like, how were how were the college football days there? Like, you know, did you coach? I they, were, they were cool. Uh, it was. I mean, it's nothing like the SEC or like right. the big the P five schools. But like mid major wise, like when we were there, uh. You know, we turned them in like we turned them into fun. Uh, I don't know if they haven't been very good the past couple of years, so I can't imagine that the the tailgating area is popping, mm-hmm. as the cool kids say nowadays. Um, when I was there, though, like, I mean, you had to get there for a seven o'clock game. If you weren't there by twelve, twelve thirty, I mean, you didn't. You just tough luck, dude. You missed out. Like, you ain't. You're not getting a spot to set up your tent anymore. Did your coach ever have like practices those mornings of to keep you guys from going too crazy like the night maybe the night yeah, before? Uh, the... We normally had eight o'clock in the morning. Um, get there. Uh, he had like a light little practice from like eight to nine. Field prep from like nine to nine thirty, and then scrimmage from ten to twelve thirty, and then get over to the pines and start tailgating. Nice. That's good. And so how was it pitching there? Like what, what was the, the vibes there pitching? Like, was there maybe one school that you just love to just shove against? Maybe uh, their fans were extra cocky or maybe they chirped a little bit too much. Like what was one team that you just couldn't wait to face? Um, The vibes at Arkansas state were awesome just because it was a pitcher friendly ballpark. Wind blew in. It was a graveyard. It was like three thirty down the lines, 400 in center and the wind blew in. So I was like, Puh! Hit it in the air. I dare you. Like, yeah. please. Um, but the team that – there are two teams that I love to face and one team I hated to face. Um, Louisiana Lafayette, the Raging Cajuns, their fans were brutal, but they were awesome to play against. Um, Georgia Southern, I don't know why, but every time I faced them, I struck them out the most out of anybody. I think I figured it up one time. I think I had like 20 something innings pitched against them in uh, three years of facing them. And I think I've struck them out 
almost 50 times. They probably couldn't wait for you to graduate or get drafted. They're like, please. I don't, I don't know why. I don't know what it was about them, but it was like, for some reason, in, one, in my junior year, I sucked against them too. Like, I only threw like five innings and gave up like six or seven runs, but I punched out nine. I was like, <laughs> for some reason, I dominated Georgia Southern. I don't know why. But I did. Uh, South Alabama was the team that if you take my college numbers and you take out every South Alabama outing, you take out every one of them, I guarantee my ERA cuts in half. Wow. As a career whole. Yeah. And I thought one team, one team. And for some reason, I couldn't get them out. I could not. Do you think it was more just like the stadium, the environment? like, Or did they no, have a really I, good team? I, for some reason, it was me. But, like, there we'd bring in a bullpen guy. He'd go five or six innings, scoreless, no problem. And his stuff – and, like, no offense to him, but, like, my stuff was better than his. And I was like, how in the world are they making contact – or not even make contact with his, but yet they're just barely ticking mine, foul ball, foul ball, foul ball, roll over base hit to the six hole. Squares around the bunt, pulls it back, gets jammed so bad, the ball hits off the first base bag. And hits over to the fence, and the guy gets a double. I'm thinking, now how in the world? Yeah. I gave up ten runs in an inning and a third, and gave up one hard hit ball. Ten runs in an inning and a third. Wow. One hard hit ball. It that was a. Be... It was a double. That was it. Everything else was exit velos of under probably 65 miles an hour. As a pitcher, though, like, would you rather have that happen, or would you have rather have them just? Like make actual hard contact off of you. Like, what makes you feel better? I mean, obviously, they both suck. But just looking at like how it all played out, I think having the the hard hit ball. This is personally, I think the hard hit balls, because for me, if I'm looking at an outing and trying to evaluate it, like I try to evaluate the South Alabama outing, and well executed pitch. We the shortstop was shifted over four steps and he hit it right where he was going to be playing. Mm -hmm. But it was a well-executed pitch. It was just hit so slow. And I was like, at least like on the balls that are scorched, like you give up 10 runs and every ball was a home run, you can go back and look and be like, all 10 of them mislocated fastballs or mislocated pitches. It's like, that's the reason why I struggled today. So yeah. it's like you have something to work for, but it's like those outings where – you give up a bunch of runs, but you execute everything and everything just doesn't go right for you. It's like, what, like what happened? Yeah. What do I like? What do I need to fix? I want a fastball down the way. I did. It was hit literally a cue ball right down, like in a perfect spot. Okay. What do I need to fix? I, I, I don't know. I don't know what, what do I need to fix? I, I don't, that was a well-located spot and he just hit it in the perfect spot. So, like, it kind of, like, it leaves you with questions in the back of your head still, like, God, if I just execute this pitch, like, it could go for a base hit now. But if, like, I'm supposed to go down the way and I miss up and in and it gets hit 450, it's like, that's why. That's why the ball was hit because I, I missed my spot. I messed up. Yeah, so that's no, no I, I get that. I mean, that has to be frustrating. Obviously, um, I didn't I didn't play <laughs> past, like, t-ball or little league so i like I, I can't even imagine or relate but um at what point then in your college career did you realize that um uh, you had that like if to when moment where you stopped saying like if i get drafted if this happens but you started thinking to yourself when i get drafted you know when a team takes me and like when what was that moment for you my freshman year okay uh my it was in the fall uh it's just i was up to 93 and i was like I was telling the coaches all the time, like, you know, you know, what are your goals here for Arkansas State? I was like, I want to be here for three years. I want to get drafted uh, top 10 rounds. I want to be the highest draft picked in Arkansas State history. And I want to uh, make it to the big leagues. And they're like, okay, well, you know, that will we'll help you work towards that. Mm -hmm. Dominated my freshman year, dominated my sophomore year, going into my junior year. This was like the big draft year, all hoopla teams all over me, blah, 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 blah. Um, I was more worried about who was up in the stands than putting up numbers on the mound and worried about the guys in the dugout 
and I kind of isolated myself, and it was just not a good situation. And baseball kind of come back to kick me in the butt and basically said, this is what we're going to do for you. We're going to make you have the worst year statistically that you've ever had, and you're going to get humbled down to the dirt. And your senior year, you're going to come back and worry about those guys in the dugout because it's going to be your last year potentially ever to play. And you're going to play your heart out for those guys. And I did. And uh, came back a different different human being after the Christmas break. And so in 94, 96, and all of a sudden, I got teams knocking down the door saying, will this guy sign? Like, is he? does he want to sign? Does he want to play? Because we want him. And sure enough, the rest is history now. So how was draft day for you? Like, I mean, obviously you, you, you were probably projected to go, you know, top, you were top 10 round, like, and you were projected to go such. Um, like, how was that experience for you? Did you have a draft party or have a couple of people over? Like, what was the vibe for you during that uh, experience? It was, I had my, my, it was me, my mom and my sister. My dad was working, but he was a police officer. So he was just driving around. Um, and so my plan was, I stayed up really late the night before and I was going to sleep in until like 12 the next day. That was my plan. I was going to sleep in. So that way I don't basically sit around and like, God, when's the draft going to start? When's it start? I was like, you know what? I'm just going to sleep, basically wake up, go get some lunch and then sit on the couch and watch the draft. And eight o'clock, my phone starts ringing from teams calling. I had probably seven calls that morning. I was like, Hey, you ready? Hey, you ready? Hey, you ready? I'm like, yes, yes, yes. And every time I'd hang it up, try to fall back asleep. I'm like, wait a minute. I just got asked if I was ready by a major league team. Okay. I'm going to try to get some sleep. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, Hello. You ready? Oh yeah. Let's do it. Like seven different teams. And so then, well, fast forward, I come to find out I was going to sleep until 12. Well, that's when the draft started Eastern time, 11 Central. Oh. So either way, I was going to miss an hour of it. Um, so dad drives over, dad drives home. And so I get, so I now it's like they took a break after the fifth round and I get calls from the Royals saying, hey, uh, we're going to take you to the sixth or seventh round. And so I call my dad after that. And I'm like, hey, hurry up and get home like, the Royals said this round they got a 10-minute break. Uh, they're three minutes away from starting, resuming to play again in the fifth. So here he comes home. So I'm walking around outside. I'm on the phone. The Royals call again and say, hey, this is a scouting director. You're our sixth rounder. Are you ready? I'm like, yes. Like, yeah, yeah, let's do this. And he said, okay, all right, perfect. We'll uh, – We'll we'll let you know about we'll we'll send you a text about ten picks before let just kind of get the phone ready and the camera ready and all that stuff. So okay, perfect. So we uh so now we're all huddled around the iPad, we're videoing it, taking pictures, and I got probably fifty five seconds. I think that's all the video is. I got fifty five seconds into it before as soon as it happened, I stopped it. My mom's phone starts going off. And then my dad's phone. So mom is sitting inside on the phone. I'm walking around outside in the front yard. Dad's walking around the backyard on the phone. And about that time, like we we haven't even gotten to hug as a family yet. Like and congratulations, you know, like we did it, all that stuff. And about that time, like we're all like, okay, finally, hang up the phone. Phone starts ringing. Hold on, hello. So like we're all doing the same thing. It was that happened. We'll say at one o'clock. It wasn't until probably four thirty-five before we finally were like, "Hey, let's put our phones away and let's finally like we can can we can celebrate now." And yeah, that was it. That was our draft party. I think the next day we threw a little. The city threw me something, but that was it. That's awesome. And also, you get you know, got a decent signing bonus. Like, what was maybe one of the first like dumb things you bought with that with your money? <laughs> Maybe I didn't, uh, I didn't get a big sign of bonus. No? Oh, because you mean, were senior sign. Yeah. 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 I didn't think about that. Oh, okay. Man, yeah. So no, I didn't No, But I mean, at the time I was like, man, like I wish like it would have been cool to have something, but like, you know what? I didn't need it. I just wanted an opportunity at that mm-hmm. time. I was like, just give me an opportunity to play the game and keep going, like keep chasing the dream. Yeah. As long as I get a jersey, I got a chance. 
Yeah, so let's let's talk about the minor leagues because this podcast, um, like I said, is part of more part of more than baseball. Uh, they're out there helping people in the minors um, better their time, you know, while they're in the minors and after the minors and all that kind of stuff. Um, what was maybe uh, a funny minor league story that you may have experienced, or maybe not, maybe not necessarily funny, but just something that you've gone through that you try to explain to somebody that you're a professional player and you're, you know, whatever's a hotel ride or food or fan interaction or whatever it may be. Um, when I was in the minors, I always got the question of, Hey, when are you, uh, when are you going to ever go pro? And I thought, well, how do I tell this without being a smart Alec? Um, I am a professional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, no. But like, when are you going to go pro and go like to the big leagues? I'm like, hmm. I don't know, buddy. Um, and then everyone likes to think too, like the question I always heard was, you know, yeah, man, like you signed, like your signing bonus slot value was this, you know, you're going to be making that for how many years? Like you'll be making that for the rest of your life. I'm like, okay, buddy. So like you, you got a job as like a bank person and you're making $50,000 a year. Do you make that for the rest of your life? Even if you get, you know, fired, mm -hmm. like, well, no. And I was like, well, that's the same with me. If I got released, that means I got fired. That means I'm not making that anymore. Even if that was true, I said, but that's not the case. They're like, you know, what, what, what's your, what was your first real check like? And I was like, well, it's $200. And they're like, stop. No way, dude. You're a professional. You play professional baseball. I'm like, yeah, I know. it was $212. That's crazy. Yeah. And I, I people don't understand that. Like how, how little minor league, minor leaguers make. Um, like I said, like I said, there's out, there's, uh, organizations out there now that's really um grinding to help them uh, better their lives and i think uh earlier today i think it was today minor leaguers uh had like a union meeting or a uh a meeting to figure out if they were going to union unionize and all that kind of stuff so i, I mean so, things yeah. are looking better for minor leaguers but yeah i mean you you talk about getting uh you talk about a pro being a professional baseball player and your checks are <laughs> quite small compared to like a professional player and we had a three bedroom apartment in Loe in 2018. And our apartment wasn't going to be ready until the next day. So, but another guy's apartment was going to be ready like the previous day. And so we all, we, there was a company that let us all rent beds. So we all got our mattresses and we all huddled up in the bed in the living room of the other guy's apartment. There were nine beds in the living room. There were two beds in each bedroom. So, I mean, what's the math on that? Nine plus six, 15 guys in a three-bedroom apartment. You talk really? about just absolutely insane. And then in our like, – and then we everyone left. But there was like five or six guys in every three-bedroom apartment, three guys in the living room, two, and then one in each bedroom. Wow. Um. So speaking of the minors, what was maybe one city that you you got off the bus and you look around and you're like, yo, where am I? I'm in the middle of nowhere. Um. Either Princeton. I don't know where it is. Either Princeton. It. This was in 2017 in rookie ball. It was either Princeton Rays, um, Bluefield Blue Jays, or um. There was one more in that league. Is this the Appy League? Or no, what league is this? The Appy. Yeah. Okay. So at Princeton, I remember there was blood in the bed and I slept on top of the covers. Oh yeah. There was like it was like someone that like like got a cut or something and like they just bled. Like they didn't they didn't change the sheets. Yeah, it was disgusting. But was and this then, on the sheets and you you pull off the the covers or whatever and you see just blood on the sheets? You're like, where, where am I? Like, probably about that big and i was yeah. like i'm just gonna put the sheet over it um and then bluefield the hotel was up top like up on top of a hill and it was like there was an eclipse one day while we were there so they gave us they gave us like these glasses so we could see it um but half the hotel it was weird half the hotel had no phone service <laughs> no phone service and no Wi-Fi. What? So if you had room, we'll say there's 20 rooms in there. If you had room number one through 10, you were good. But 11 to 20, you had no phone service and no uh, no Wi-Fi. So you basically had to go to the other side and find one of your boys over there. And like, hey, let me come chill in your room for a bit. 
or let me go walk around. And not to mention, it's the heat of the summer and you're up top of a hill. And so you've got to walk down this long driveway down to the main strip to go find food, then eat it, then walk right back up. It, yeah, it was just it was a crap show. Wow. Like and the miners is the grind. Like, I mean, obviously, like the long, the long drives and you made it through like you made it all the way to the major league, major, major league debut. Let's get into that a little bit. Um, Like how how did you get the call that you were going to get go to the majors? And how was that first time, like, you know, making your major league debut in a, in a major league stadium? Uh, It was 2020. I was felt like I was trending towards breaking with the team at a camp in spring training. And then all of a sudden, COVID happened. Mm-hmm. So then I go home, training, staying ready and all that stuff. So I was like, well, I'm hoping I still get an invite to Spring Train 2.0. So all right, Spring Train 2.0 happens. So I go to Kansas City. So it's a month. And then there's three exhibition games, two against Houston and Kansas City. And then you fly. To, when, then the team was going to fly to St. Louis. Uh, there was going to be a bus and a and the team flight that were going to St. Louis. And then after that, the opening day roster was going to be set, and that team was going to go to Cleveland. Okay, so there the clubhouses were split. The visiting clubhouse was all like under one year of service time and non roster guys. The other clubhouse was all older guys like over a year uh two years three years all those all the older guys so so i'm obviously in the visiting clubhouse so they tell everybody that before houston's coming in like we'll just say this is a a saturday that they're telling us it was like all right houston's coming in on sunday so we need all of our stuff out of the visiting clubhouse on saturday so that way when houston comes in they can have a you know they can put all their stuff there Everyone from the visiting clubhouse is going to get all their stuff brought to the T-Bones place um, in in Kansas, on the Kansas side, Kansas City, Kansas. And so at that indie ball team, so I, okay. So I was like asking around, like, hey, you know, what, what'd they tell you? And they're like, oh, I'm going to the T-Bones place. I might not make, I might not make the team. Like, well, where are you going? I'm going to the t-bones place where are you going I'm going to the t-bones place where are you going zuber i'm like i don't know i said hey, no one's told me anything and they're like so i was asking the clubbies this is like saturday night now and i was like hey um where do i do with all my stuff and they're like has anyone told you anything i say like, no and he's like um yeah probably just take it over to the t-bones place okay so sunday was a practice day so Wake up in the hotel, drive all the way, 30 minutes out to uh, the T-Bones place, do practice. Um, Mon- or Sunday night, I get a call from Cal, the pitching coach, and said, hey, you're pitching on Monday night against the Astros. So don't go to the T-Bones field to practice. Go over there, get your stuff that you'll need for the game, uh, and then just bring it to the field on Monday. And then I'll, he said, and then I'll shoot you a text with uh with all like the meeting times and whatnot. So that way, and then basically you'll just be with us for Monday. So you'll take BP and do all that stuff. And I said, okay, fine, like cool. So I drive over, go get my stuff, and I drive back. And uh, so I'm thinking there's like gonna be ten other guys or so, whatnot that were gonna be over there. Well, I'm there, and I'm the only one from the T Bones place that's there for these meetings. And I'm like. Um, I'm definitely not where I'm supposed to be. So I walk up the steps and I feel this person do this like on my shoulder. And I'm thinking like, like, and it was Mike Matheny. It was the manager. And he said, Hey, he said, when you were a kid, did you ever go to the principal's office? And I was like, like once or twice. Why? And he goes, well, today I'm the principal and I need to see you in my office. And I'm like, gosh, dang it. Like, I literally showed up to a meeting I wasn't supposed to, and I'm about to get in trouble. Like, that's just my freaking luck. And so I walk in, and so he's like, you know, give me the spill. It's like, hey, you know, um, you know, the roster is only X amount of people. You did everything that you could possibly do to make this team. Um, but, you know, there's got to be some, 
some moves that need to happen because you're non roster. And I was like, yeah, like, no, I understand. He said, you know, and it sucks because like, you know, there's guys that we want on the team that deserve to be on the team. And I was like, yeah, but you know, it's part of the game and I'm, I'll be ready whenever the time calls. He said, okay, well, you know, just, I just want you to know that you, know, you did everything you could to make this team. Um, it just, it might not happen. And I was like, okay, but I just want you to let you know that you need to tell your parents that you're going to be in Cleveland come opening day. And I was like, what? And he's like, yeah, he's like, you're, he's like, you know, it's not official yet because there's got to be some stuff that happens. He said, but you know, you'll, you'll be in Cleveland on opening day. And I was like, so does this mean like I made the team or like what, what, what's going to said, Well, you haven't officially made it. I said, can we hug yet? Like, is this like where we can hug and say, Hey, you're going to the big leagues. He's like, not yet. And then St. Louis, he basically told me, he said, Hey, he said, you made the team. And then we got finally got the hug in Cleveland on opening day during BP. And I thought, finally, yeah, here we are. So obviously it was COVID during, in 2020. Uh, <laughs> so your, your family couldn't go nothing like that. So, um like how was it pitching with cardboard boxes and like the fake noise how was the fake noise like i need a <laughs> that's something i've been kind of it was about. it was interesting uh i mean it it definitely i don't know it was it was just it was interesting the fake noise it was just when you look around and you just see nothing it almost looked like the squid games you're like this is very weird yeah but it still is. I mean, you're still facing big league hitters. Like you're still Miguel Cabrera is still standing sixty feet six inches Who's away. Who's the first from person you you faced as as a big leaguer? Uh, Caesar Hernandez. He's now with the Nationals. Second baseman was with the Indians or Indians Guardians. Yeah. Um, White Sox won a Gold Glove in 2020. That's awesome. So, at what point did you realize, like, I'm not in the minors anymore? Like, what was the one thing that you saw? Like, that's just so show. Maybe it was the club. The club he's going the extra mile. Maybe the spread, the travel. But at one point, you're like, man, um, the flight, obviously, uh, the hotel room. Um, no blood on the on the sheets there. <laughs> no, like fine wine, maybe. Uh, God, the stadium. Whenever I walked into the stadium and I just did this or just around it, and I thought, boy, this isn't Lexington Legends anymore. Uh, this is this is a massive stadium. Um, yeah, I mean, it was just – I don't know. It was crazy. Just looking at the stadium, the flight, the hotel, I thought, I'm here. I made it. That's awesome. And I was talking to Nick about this. I said, what is maybe like um... – so like rookie hazing that they made you go through talking to him. He said they made him wear like some inflatable suit or something like that on on, on the right. Hazmat suit. Okay, so did you have to wear that as well? Yeah, it was a big, uh, big inflatable one that you just blow. You blew it up. You had to blow it up and get on the plane, deflate it when you're on the plane, blow it back up to get off the plane, uh, get on the get on the bus with it inflated. And then, uh, yeah, it was uncomfortable, but, you know, you had fun with it. Yeah. Did they do, make you go on any, like, coffee runs or anything of that kind of nature? Or was it pretty much just that was, like, the only, like, you know, hazing they made you guys do? Because obviously with COVID, there's probably so much restrictions. Uh, No, it was just that. Nice. It was just it was just getting dressed up and, you know, singing a song pretty much. That was it. Did you have to do, like, uh, karaoke, karaoke on the bus? Oh, yeah. Run the plane? What what song uh, did they make you sing? Uh, it's not it's not a comfort it's it's off of uh, it's off of Step Brothers. I don't know. It's whenever it's whenever they're doing the presentation on the boat. Ah, uh, yes, 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 yes. Okay, I got you. I got you. Yeah. Did you did you crush it at least? Well, of course. <laughs> oh yeah, I had them all. They were all bobbing their head, kind of doing this to yeah. it. It was I, I had fun with it. It was it was good. What is what is one of the big the the cities that you visited as a big leaguer? You're like, wow, this is incredible. Like maybe the fans are extra nice, or like the city itself. But like, what was your favorite place to travel to? I like obviously Cleveland's got a special place. Um, I thought Baltimore 
Cause like you, where the hotel that you stay at, it's like right on the Harbor. And I like the view from the hotel. It was just, I thought it was beautiful. Uh, I like Tampa just cause you're right there on the water. So you can walk around in the morning. It's a good coffee shops right around there. Um, did you ever pitch in San Francisco or Oakland? I've never oh. been to any of the California ones. I've been been to Seattle. Seattle's my favorite stadium. That's that whole area. That that stadium is beautiful. The weather was uh, it was Seattle's my favorite. Yeah, a couple of things I want to talk to talk about before we end. Um, obviously during the minors, you, you can hear all the fans kind of chirping at you in college and stuff. The stadiums are smaller. Um, as a professional, like in the as a as a major leaguer, I should say. Um, like, what are some of the things that like, the fans maybe were chirping at you as you were getting ready in the bullpen? And what city, like, or stadium had like the worst fans? Maybe like, was it Phil- was it Philadelphia or some or New York, Chicago. Chicago? Chicago for me. I've never been to New York, but Chicago for me, um, they let you know everything there is to know about your failures in life. White Sox uh, or the Cubs? White Sox. Okay. Yeah, they let you know. Um, they let you know about how bad you sucked in high school. They let you know that uh, how bad you are as an individual. Um, they read off your numbers, and especially if as you're sitting in there, if you yeah. have to taken out, they they remind you that you should have never picked up a ball a day. It's just they go. They, I mean, they start from the second that you're out the womb to the second that you're standing in front of them and they let you, they remind you of every possible bad scenario that should have happened and would have happened had I not have played baseball. And I was like, I just can't say anything, but I just got to sit here and wear it. They're ruthless. They're brutal. Um, But you know, it's baseball and coming off of 2020 where you don't hear any of that. It's like, yeah, I probably enjoyed it a little bit. You get fans there a little, yeah, not much. Yeah, no, I, I respect that. Um, how hard is it for you to not just like chirp back? I mean, or, or do you like maybe you do? I don't know. No, no, I don't chirp back. I mean, it's just I remember when at like football games, like I'd be the one chirping at the football players. Yeah. So like, um, they're doing it. They're more or less doing it uh, because they want to see their team win. Uh, they also want to do it because they want to see a reaction. So if you don't feed into their reaction, then it's like you're basically just doing this for nothing. Yeah. Uh, and then you just really and truly just kept tune them out. If you tune them out, you don't hear them. Yeah. Every now, every now and again, there's a couple times that I've heard something and I'm like, that's pretty good. I, I don't want to laugh because it's yeah. an insult, but that was pretty good. What was maybe like a funny chirp that you just got to like tip your cap to? Like yeah, that was good. Maybe that was pretty funny. Uh, I got told one time they said, "Hey, when did when did they when did Kansas City give the Bat Boy, um, a uniform to pitch in?" And I thought, because there was one day like my pants like I kept like I, I rolled my pants up for like a split second, and I threw a pitch with them rolled up on accident, and so. I guess this fan thought that I didn't have pants long enough to fit. And they thought, so then I got roasted for being short. I also got roasted for thinking that I was the bat boy. Um, yeah, it's just, they let me hear it. Who was the hard, Who's who's been the hardest guy you've faced um, so far where you're like, that guy just, I can't get him out. Or maybe, yeah, like who's, who's someone that you just, they just owns you. Like the, was it, uh, was it, was it Alabama? You said the college that you couldn't get out. Alabama. Yeah. So who uh, who was that I'd guy say, for in the majors? Um, man, I don't. I mean, there's like pretty much everybody, but like the guys that are like Nelson Cruz, Miguel Cabrera. Like I say, those two because in 2020, it seemed like every time that we faced the Twins or the Tigers. I was having to get warm, and it was like, "Who am I facing?" One of those two, and I was like, "Oh, well, all right, well, saddle up. Here we go." Yeah. Um, How is it facing like legends like Mel- Gail Cabrera and Nelson uh, Cruz? Obviously, they're just le- legends in the game here. You you want to get them out so bad because uh, you don't want to give up a hit or something and be like a, another statistic for them. Like, but you want to be the one to be like, "Hey, that guy's got three thousand hits, but he doesn't have one off of me." Like I've got him out every time I face him or whatever it might be. Um, 
I haven't struck out Miguel Cabrera. That's my uh, that's that's on my bucket list. I want to strike him out, but I have gotten him out so far every time I faced him. Now I say that, and the next time I face him, it'll probably be his like six hundredth home run. But so he's never gotten a hit off you. He's zero for five or zero for six right now. That's that's a stat right there. Like I would put that in my Twitter bio. Like oh, and now, you know, Miguel Cabrera, but, like, one of the greatest, zero for five. So like it's it's pretty cool to have to like say that you know a guy that's going to be in the Hall of Fame like him uh, mm-hmm. that that I've gotten him out every time I faced him. Uh, I did get a signed bat from him just because I I'm wow. I, I'm like big into memorabilia and stuff. Yeah. So I I asked him for a signed ball and he gave me a ball and he asked me if I got the bat too and I was like no, but sure enough I got a like a two Tyler Miguel Cabrera and I thought this is awesome see that's right there that's the show moment where you just pinch yourself you're like i just got a bat from miguel cabrera even though he's 0 for 5 0 for 6 against me like he just gifted me like a bat did you give him something too maybe like a sign something like hey i know i'm not you know you're not, <laughs> yeah but you never know i'll be there soon no no <laughs> no no i mean like i i you know like i think whenever a kid's like hey will you sign this ball for me like i think it's pretty cool um, and for a guy in the MLB that's done what he's done and it's been a legend as him, for him to have another guy that's in the MLB reach out and want his autograph, I think like that right there is – I think that right there, the way I look at it, is probably enough for him to be like, you know what, everyone in the league pretty much wants my autograph. Um, if they want it, they can reach out to me pretty much. And like to have someone do that, it's like, that's a pretty cool moment for him to have someone else that's equal stature, big leaguer um, to say, Hey, we like, if I send a ball over, will you get it signed for me? Yeah. That's awesome. And, and kudos to you, obviously for making your, your, your um, major league debut pitching. Um, obviously you're rehabbing now, like, like what's the what's the plan looking at like moving forward like twenty twenty uh three like well, we're good to go for twenty twenty three, May, May okay May of twenty twenty three so who knows after twenty twenty three after May of twenty twenty three um the plan is to obviously pitch and then um get healthy go to an affiliate or somewhere and then get back to the big leagues as yeah. quick as possible so if that's a month if that's two months if that's ride out the minor leagues the rest of the year, and then the next year go back, then sure. so be it. But that's the plan is to go back as soon as possible. Yeah, and, like, this last thing I want to end on and talk about before we end is, like, music. Like, what is your walkout song as, as you're coming out ready to pitch? Um, so I didn't have one in the big leagues, um, but I recently my favorite one right now is In the Air Tonight by Phil Collins. Okay. The one with the drums. Yep, yep. So that's kind of, like, I feel like that's kind of the tone and the mood I want. Um, now I just got to make it happen. And you were closing games, right, for Kansas City um, in 2020 and 2021 or no? Or you just uh, I threw in the ninth inning a couple times, like in close ball games, but it was mm-hmm. always us down. It's like okay. two to one, three to one, three to one, three to two. Um, I never did get my – I haven't got my first save yet. So that's what – I'm still looking for that one. Um, but you know, closing, I, I, that's the dream is to get healthy again and then come back and basically start closing ball games in the big leagues now. Yeah. That'd be electric. And you look at like, um, Edwin Diaz's walkout song for when he closes, uh, for the Mets that's and like, so, that's so sick. I love that. Isn't that, and then the Trump, the guy with the trumpets a couple of days, that, games ago. That's so dope. I, I'm in it. That's awesome. See, I don't I, play the trumpet, I, but I play the cello. So I, 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 I might have to brush out the cello for when you are closing, and then just. I wish. <laughs> I'll be I, out wish there just... play, I wish he'd play it every time. That was so sick. Just have a full on concert right before he yeah. comes out to. Yeah, like you. you that's that's incredible. It's, it's an absolutely just an electric sighting seeing him walk out, and that's what I'm hoping to see uh, when you're pitching as well. Um, yeah. I will say this. Um, uh, I didn't even talk about Fortnite. We sh- I was going to talk about that because I see I follow you on TikTok and I see you out there grinding. <laughs> We're going to have to squat up sometime. Like I'm serious, man. Yeah. Like I I I uh I've been uh grinding 
with that with the no build like I, I know you i see you building around like and whatnot but like i love that no build stuff man i just i'm out there just doing my thing hey i hear you on that one yeah we get i get down on Fortnite too that helps me that helps keeps me sane and that's just kind of like uh it's another avenue that i can just step away from the game you know have a rough game or have a good game on the field it's like all right, come home and grind with the boys for a little bit. Yeah. Kind of go into a whole different universe and then come back to reality. Yeah. No, absolutely. Like I said, like we'll have to squad us sometime. Um, make it we'll have to make it happen at least once or twice a year before. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, right, we brother. will. For sure. Well, hey, I appreciate you coming on. Um, hopefully once you make it back to the majors and if you're over here in, in uh now, actually now with the new rules and everything, like you may be here pitching in Milwaukee or um or chicago for the cubs and for, uh, i'll have to we'll come watch you pitch and uh while they meet each other maybe get, get something get something to eat or something out you know in chicago yeah, or, or milwaukee or something of course yeah for sure all right brother well you have a great rest of your uh day i yeah. uh, hope for the rehab to continue to go well and i appreciate you coming on man yeah thank you very much you got it man